Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Well, it's pretty obvious from the screen right here you can see that there is a lot of pain out there in the market right now and if I had to guess, a lot of you have been losing money. You should be making money in times like these. So in this video I'm going to show you exactly how to do that and what things you can buy to accomplish this. I'll say for myself, until recently my portfolio has been pretty flat, but I'm now about to take it to the next level and show you exactly how to do that, how to make money when everyone else is losing money in the stock market. So many of you probably already know the market has something comparable to seasons of the year. There are bear markets and bull markets, but a lot of people don't know is a lot of people don't think about one of the other markets we've had, which are these bleed out markets like in the early 2000s. You can see here, for example, after the dot com boom to pretty much even really 2008, even after 2014, nothing really happened in that year. You could see for those two decades, it was nearly flat. And I can see why some people are thinking we're moving into that area, into that kind of market. But you also need to learn how to trade and invest in that kind of market. Out of all the seasons of the year in the stock market, right now this is the bitter cold season. Where maybe right now you shouldn't be putting seeds into the ground. So your goal as an investor is to find any stocks or investments that will do very well. And also you have to be able to find investments that won't do so well. So if you're able to do those two things, you can thrive in almost any market. So you need to be able to do both. You need to be able to find those home run good stocks. And you also need to be able to find those companies that aren't going to do so well. Those trash companies you know that are eventually going to go to zero. So let's look through everything that's going on right now in the stock market. And let's see what most people are turning to. And let's see out of all the strategies what will probably make you the most money in this time. So the first one a lot of people have been turning to recently, obviously, is crypto. They feel that crypto is a new kind of asset, has a lot of utility, there's smart contracts. And crypto, you would think, because of its limited supply, should perform well as an inflation hedge. I think most people agree that inflation and fuel price difficulties are the main cause of the economic downturn right now. And you can see here with Bitcoin, it's down 11% just the last day. It's been going down for pretty much the past year straight. It's not really performing in line with inflation. You can see Ethereum's even worse. The same thing is going on. So I think this is pretty much a validation that crypto is more of a speculation vehicle than an inflation hedge. And you can see that right here. So the people who are turning to crypto in a red market like this, they're not really faring much better than the people who are having stocks. And you can see here, unlike stocks, actually, a lot of the crypto markets behave, in my opinion, very reprehensibly. They say here, for example, as soon as the crypto price goes down, this happens every single time, crypto platforms are halting withdrawals as Bitcoin tanks over 13%. This usually happens in the crypto markets when the price goes down, all of a sudden there's liquidity issues, brokerage is shut down, tokens blow up, you're not allowed to get your money out. That's why me as an investor, I don't get too much into crypto, but this is also contributing to the downward price in the crypto markets. There's just not as much faith that investors are willing to put into it when the exchanges act this way. And you can see here the Binance Crypto Exchange, which is another major exchange, is saying Binance halts Bitcoin withdrawals due to stuck on chain transaction. The world's largest crypto exchange, Binance, paused withdrawals of the world's biggest cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, on Monday. And you can see this article is on June 14th. So beyond all the other troubles, there was a lot of pain and difficulty in the crypto markets. And you can see here trash tokens blowing up, Bitcoin down. You can see the price Bitcoin down to 22,000. This is not the hedge that people were looking for in bad economic times. Now that said too, stocks aren't doing much better. Let's look at the last year. Stocks are down quite a bit from the peak here in November around 467 for the S&P 500 ETF down now to $375. Stocks are not doing so well and you can even see that as well on the heat map of today's market. There's really nowhere to be. Even McDonald's is barely up today. And if you're dollar cost averaging, trying to go long into this market, you've been losing money consistently for the past year. Now, a lot of people naturally would say, okay, crypto stocks are not doing so well, but what about real estate? Well, I hate to tell you, my friends, but I made a video about this explaining. It's called Good Luck Buying a House in 2022. I uploaded this in March of 2022. If you did not buy a house <laughs> during 2020 after coronavirus, you probably missed the boat. And we have the information here from the Federal Reserve. This is the median sales price of houses sold for the United States. House prices have nearly doubled in the last two years, and obviously in certain areas it's even worse. This is just the median sales price, official government statistics, and a lot of places, like I reported in this video, you're seeing houses sometimes 3x in price. So a lot of people, if you wanted to buy a house or own land, and you didn't do it in 2020, you likely missed the boat. So at this point in the market, I think it'd be very difficult for people to get the money together to do that. So a lot of people might say now, well, yeah, stocks, real estate, crypto, I know those things are bad. That's why I'm in safe physical assets like physical gold and silver. Well, I'll tell to those investors, not so fast right now. I've looked at the stats and I'm actually in physical silver and myself. And I can tell you it's not the inflation hedge you think it is. And we can tell it from the performance has gone through the past year. So here you see a pretty popular physical silver coin that a lot of people like to buy for hedging. This is American Silver Eagle. It's about one ounce. You can get it from websites like apmex.com. And one thing they do, which is really interesting and useful, is they track the physical price of silver. And I know this for myself as well. I bought physical silver 
in 2020 after the coronavirus and after I knew the inflation would pick up and take a look here at the price. So here we have the one year chart and you can see from 2021, actually the physical price of silver has declined. You see here it's starting at $28 and now it's down to $21. And I can tell you the actual physical coins, the price on the website has been pretty stable, but if you're trying to resell them, obviously you'd incur difficulty in fees trying to sell back physical silver at this time. So as of this moment, physical silver is not performing and not really reacting the way it should be with inflation. Now it's even worse in the stock market too. On the stock market, you have ETFs, which are paper deposits on physical silver. You can buy and sell and trade like a stock. So here we have is the iShare Silver Trust ETF. The last year it's reacting pretty much the same way as physical silver. Coming from peak of $24 now down to $19.50, you've been losing money if you were in silver over the past year pretty consistently. And this is why among the many reasons that I think that the silver market and precious metals market is pretty cornered and pretty manipulated. So if you're looking to actually get true market activity and true market value in there, you're not going to get it in physical silver and physical gold. And you're even less likely to get that in the ETFs for gold and silver. You can see here as well, here's the ETF for gold. It's done a little bit better. It's been flat over the last year rather than losing compared to silver. But as well, considering that how much inflation has been going on, ideally you should have been making more money than just being flat on gold. If your investment, if the underlying asset were truly reacting in line with inflation we've seen in the United States, because we know the price of food's gone up, the price of land's gone up, the price of real estate has dramatically gone up. Gold is not reacting to that. So that leaves the final investing option that I think a lot of people aren't really considering and they should be. And that is shorting, right? So if we go back here to the stock market during the early 2000s, a lot of people will tell you from that time will anecdotally tell you that the only way during that time to make money in the stock market was by shorting. Now what is shorting? Just putting it really simply, you're placing a bet that a stock price will go down. And so as you can tell by today's market and recently, yeah, that was a pretty good bet if you're betting that stock prices will go down. And you can see there are times in the stock market when it makes the most sense too short because everything's going down and there are a lot of trash companies burning out. So right now it seems that the only strategy that probably is going to work for you out there is going to be shorting. So now it's the job of investors to find out all those trash companies out there that aren't going to survive this bear market and aren't going to survive this current geopolitical situation and short them. In my view, dollar cost averaging and going all in on stocks right now as they are falling and as they have been falling the last year, because in the long run market gives returns, is psychologically flawed in my opinion. If you are certain, for example, that your tattooed chef investment is going to make it and go big in this market, it might mean that in order to see return on that investment going long on that stock, you wouldn't have to hold that stock while continuously losing money for months and years. And as you can see, a lot of investors during that time, during this market, are probably going to give up and are probably going to sell and run away from their stocks. And that's where the short seller makes money. So now is the time to learn how to short sell if you haven't done that already. And there are a lot of stocks and cryptos out there that are frankly going to go to zero because they're garbage, because they're trash. And it's your job right now, if you're going to get into short selling, it's your job to find those. And I'm going to explain in this video, it's probably not too difficult to find those trash cryptos and trash stocks. And it's not even that difficult to short sell, which I'm going to explain to you exactly how to do that and exactly how to make money from stock prices that are falling. There are stocks right now that will go to zero or will lose 99% of their value. And it's your job to find those. There are investors out there right now who only believe in buy and hold doubling down in dollar cost averaging and over time they're gonna be watched out from their positions as they see this every single day and they lose more and more money and eventually are forced to sell to cover their daily needs and daily necessities so for example a brokerage used a lot by youtubers and also people who learned investing from YouTube is m1 finance and you can see m1 finance doesn't give the ability to short sell stocks. So that means everybody even operating on that stock brokerage doesn't have the ability to take advantage of the strategy I'm going to tell you. Now, there's nothing wrong with using a brokerage like M1 Finance for long-term investing, but if you're going to be a serious investor, you need to use one of these non-fintech trading brokerages like TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, Schwab, because while they don't have the flashiest interfaces, they give you access to the real under the hood tools to make the most money in the stock market, which in this case is short selling. So I'm going to quickly show you exactly how to do that on TD Ameritrade. So here we are on TD Ameritrade. And as you can see, it's not exactly the flashiest brokerage. It's pretty complicated. It doesn't look inviting like the other fintech ones, but it gives you access to more robust tools on how to trade on the stock market. So we're going to log in right now. I'm going to show you how to short sell stocks. Here we are on TD Ameritrade. I'm just picking an example of a meme stock here, Tattooed Chef. You can see it's down pretty hard over the last year. If you want to do a short sell on a stock like this, and I'm going to show you actually how to find new ideas for stocks to short. But for this one, I'm just going to show you exactly mechanically what buttons to press to short this stock or any stock like it or any stock that you think is going to go down in price into the future. So all you would do is you'd press this button right here that says sell. And it's probably similar in any other brokerage like Fidelity or Schwab. You click the sell button and down here you have a few options. So there's an action first and foremost that you want to do. 
So this is sell, right? So we can't sell tattooed chef because I don't own this stock. Now, I, if I had shares in the stock, I could sell them. And also you can see here, there's an option to buy them, buy to cover and sell short. So what you would need to do is you'd click this button right here, sell short. That means you're opening a short position. You're borrowing shares to bet that this stock price is going to go down. So we're just going to do a quick calculation here. We want to short 10,000 shares of tattooed chef. So you can see the closing price was $6 and 10 cents in order to short $10,000 worth of shares. We would do a little math and you'd see that it's about 1600 shares you'd want to short. So you'd put 1600 or you could put the exact number if you like. That's the ticker for this stock. Order type is limit. That's what you want to do. Price will do the current market price 610. And then boom, after that you'd hit place the order. Now I'm not going to do this because I'm not going to go short tattooed chef, but that's an example mechanically of exactly what you need to do to go short on a stock. This isn't available in other brokerages like for example, M1 finance. So I would recommend if you're going to be doing this strategy, you need to get a brokerage that allows you to do this. In this case for me, I'm using TD Ameritrade. Now, when you want to finish your short, let's say the stock price has gone down, you're ready to collect your money. All you would do is you flip this right here and click buy to cover. And that means you just buy back those shares you're shorting and that's how you exit the position. Now, if you don't wanna do shorting because it's a little bit difficult and there are other concerns to worry about, I'm gonna link a video down in the description explaining exactly how to short stocks and what goes into it. Because there's more than just what I showed here. But if you don't like to do that, there actually are cheap and easy investment products you can use to short indexes without doing this on individual companies. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So here we are on an inverse ETF. So this is the ProShare short Russell 2000. And all this is doing is shorting the Russell 2000, which is an index of a bunch of middle tier to smaller stocks in the stock market. And you can see recently, just because of the market trouble, it's been going up pretty steadily the last year. So if you wanna just buy an ETF that shorts it, this is an example here of something you can do. I will say that these things can be a little bit risky. You can see here the expense ratio is almost 1%. So just by holding this stock, you're losing about 1% of your potential gains. And they have a warning right here, which I think you should read and understand. It says, leverage, inverse, and commodity ETFs or ETPs. These are not suitable for most investors. Investing in these types of exchange traded products involves heightened risks, including higher margin requirements, leverage, derivatives, and complex investment strategies. These securities are designed for daily use only and are generally not intended to be held overnight or long term. So as long as you understand these things and you're aware of those are the two main strategies that you can do to actually short things without getting into options contracts, that's one way to approach this market and make money from stocks going down and other investors losing money. And if you're looking for some ideas on stocks to short, I would just think from psychologically speaking, there are a lot of people who have been betting on these hypey meme stock companies that actually don't have solid financial fundamentals. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find these companies that are trashy meme stocks and start shorting them because I know that they're going to be performing the worst during this market. So you have here an example on swaggystocks.com. You can find the most mentioned Wall Street bets trending stocks. And I'm just going to go down this list and over time and find those. So if you want to see exactly what stocks I find to short, become a member on this channel and I'll be uploading deep dives on these stocks that I'm going to be shorting. Another example right here, you can just find them on Yahoo Finance. If you search Reddit stocks that are trending on Wall Street bets, or even if you just take some time to think about like what's the average investor buying, like the ones that are hyped up on YouTube and just invest in whatever's popular. It lists a bunch here, which some of them might even be good ideas like Virgin Galactic, Obviously, there's Platinir, Tesla, Lucid, Ironet, Canoe, and Sophie Technologies. There are a whole bunch of different directions you can take this shorting trading strategy, and I'm going to be doing that later for channel members. Now, there are some risks to the strategy. One is that the Federal Reserve could lower interest rates negative like you've seen in Europe. Though, obviously, if they were to do that at this point with this economy, you would see inflation on par with the 1930s in Germany to the point of high inflation might even become borderline. We might see hyperinflation if that were to happen but that also is a potential danger to short positions another thing too is when the coronavirus first started actually china what they did is they outright banned and limited short selling on their stock markets and so this is something the united states government might do as well so you need to keep an eye on that it's possible that if the economy gets bad enough they might say for the sake of national security for the sake of social stability we're limiting we're regulating or we're shutting down short selling so that's another thing to keep an eye on that's a potential danger to this strategy Another thing which would be good for our longs is that the conflict in Ukraine could end. And then one would hope that both parties would seek to end the conflict and then reverse the damage that has been done by it and stabilization in the energy markets, people becoming less concerned about geopolitical risks. But until that happens, as long as this war continues to go on, that also, that is gonna be a geopolitical factor continuing to push down the price of stocks. But that's something to keep an eye on as well. Now I'm gonna read here quickly, there are some risks to short selling stocks that aren't the same as when you just buy a stock and go long. So you need to understand this. So one is the market risk, and this is according to ally.com. And it says, market risk is one of the biggest risks of short selling because there is no limit on how high a stock can go. 
The market risk you face as a short seller is potentially unlimited. The higher a stock price goes, the more pain you feel. So what this means is that unlike with a stock when you buy it normally, the worst a stock can do is go to zero. But when you're betting on the stock price going down, the problem is a stock can go up in the opposite direction, potentially to infinity, so you can lose more than your initial investment. So you need to be very, very careful and watch your shorts like a hawk and have protections in place. Because it makes sense. Let's say you have a stock, it's $100, it goes to zero. The most you can lose per share is $100. But let's say that same stock goes from $100 to $1,000. Well, now you've just lost 10 times the value of your short. So that's one danger you need to pay attention to. Now, obviously, this needs no introduction as well. There can be a short squeeze when there are too many people shorting a stock. It can go in the opposite direction and the price can go up. So that's one thing to worry about. And one thing to worry about too is that shorting is inherently a margin bet. So what that means is that when you're shorting a stock, you're borrowing shares or you're borrowing money to do it. So there usually are associated fees and risks with that. So if for example, if you borrow too much money, you have a chance that your broker might do what's called a margin call and force you to sell out of your shorts at a bad time. So you need to be careful with that and learn all the risks. I'm gonna have links down in the description explaining exactly more about shorting and how to do it and what are the risks, but pay attention to those when you start to research the strategy. But the upside is right now, you can see in this market, there are a lot of opportunities for shorts out there. And by the way, this is the S&P 500. These are the best of the best on the U.S. stock markets. There are even worse, trashier companies out there that are just begging to be shorted right now, in my opinion. And also, too, there are a lot of investors out there who have that ETF buy and hold dollar cost average mentality that aren't going to be short selling, that aren't going to be selling their stocks and probably until they lose more money. And in that time, you have an opportunity to pick up the pieces, pick out those dollars that are falling out of their portfolio, especially from investors who have brokerages like M1 Finance, where they actually physically can't even short sell themselves. So there's opportunity in these red markets like these, and I think I've demonstrated that. But the best strategy right now, in my opinion, seems to be shorting. This feels like the market is returning to how it was in the early 2000s. That's all for this video. Become a channel member. I'm going to do a deep dive into these trashy, hypey meme stocks that are really popular, but have no fundamentals, and I think are going to get crushed in this market. And I'm going to show you exactly how I'm shorting those companies for channel members. If you want earlier investing news ahead of the videos, join the Telegram journal t.me slash Eugene Chargrain. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.